<laughs> so are you starting? We're going here, huh? Are we going? We're going, man. I was going to kick it, but yeah, Randall. <laughs> well, go Hill kick it. Tour. Well, yeah, you did it. Oh, I did. Well, it we're just day. greetings, greetings, everybody. Yeah, we hadn't done a podcast. Want to get back on and get back in touch? We got a bunch of new subscribers. Make sure you know what Randall's up to. This is our current team, uh, including Randall Carlson and his brother Rowan, not here with us today, but. The four of us will be on the tour coming up in the Scablands, which is now becoming an annual event. We're going to do it in mid-May. So that's one of the things we want to talk about today, let you know where we're going to be visiting in Washington State, the channel Scablands. So Randall's got some stuff to show us there. We're going to look at some maps and uh, talk about the other events that he's going to be speaking at coming up. Earth Origins in Sedona is right away, and Cosmic Summit is in the middle of June. Also got another tour coming up in mid-September. First one we're going to do in the Columbia Gorge is going to be awesome. So we'll, we'll hint at that. But, yeah, we want to let you know Randall Carlson does tours. And we're part of the team that brings that brings that across to you. So, yeah, Randall, you've uh, been out there with us. We kind of got a semi-standardized itinerary. So you want to talk about some of the places we're going to go and show us some images, maps, and oh, sure. we'll see where we go here. Yeah, well, we're going to be going to some awesome places, and what we're going to be exploring is what geologists recognize as some of the greatest floods that have ever happened in the history of the Earth, and they are truly hard to wrap your head around until you've spent a week in those landscapes. And I think it's something that's important that people know about, that these kinds of events have occurred. And what's interesting about these floods that occurred right at the end of the last ice age is they seem to be associated with a lot of other interesting phenomena, such as the mass extinction of the great megafauna, possible evidence for multi-impact events. Um, what else? Extreme climate changes that have occurred. Uh, a lot of There's a lot of new awareness now of the Younger Dryas episode, which lasted from roughly 12,900 to 11,600 years ago, which seems to mark the termination of this great episode of deglaciation, where these great ice sheets that covered North America rapidly disappeared. And this is what caused these floods, is this extremely rapid uh, melting away of the great ice sheets. What appears to have occurred is that there were perhaps three episodes of extreme melting. And this is what we see uh, engraved into this landscape of the so-called Scablands, which is uh, goes back to the work of J. Harlan Bretz back in the 1920s uh, when he first discovered and realized that there was this suite of evidence that just couldn't be explained by uh, normal processes. So... He had to start thinking outside the box. He had to start thinking on the mega scale. And it took about 30 years for him to convince his uh, colleagues that what he was looking at was real, that there really were floods that were could only be measured in hundreds of millions of cubic feet per second. There is, like I said, this is evidence of some of the most spectacular floods who have ever occurred in the history of the earth. The only other place now that floods on this scale, and we're talking about in excess of seven or 800 million, possibly up to a billion cubic feet per second, right? Now, this is inconceivable. Just by comparison, if we look at one of the largest, most destructive floods in, in America in the 20th century, it was the great Missis there was two great Mississippi floods, one in 1927, one in 1993. Both of those floods, uh, peaked at just over 1 million cubic feet per second. We're talking about seven or 800 times the volume of the peak discharge ever measured on the Mississippi River. How do you wrap your head around that? Well, how you wrap your head around that is you go on a tour and you spend a week visiting these places. And I promise you at the end of that tour, your mind will have been stretched into places you hadn't even imagined. And you'll go back going, my gosh, these things have really happened. This is not fiction, science fiction. This is not just mythology. But, of course, that brings in the other interesting point is that myths, mythology, is full of stories about these gigantic floods. Well, we can now demonstrate that gigantic floods have occurred. I think you're muted, Brad. Brad is 
so struck by the extraordinariness of it that he can't talk. He's lost his voice. <laughs> well, I was trying not to blurt out that we need to introduce part of the team here. I think, well, yes. Yeah, so thank you. for. Well, so, I'm just so excited about the tour, I forgot. <laughs> so let's introduce the team. <laughs> well, we've got Laura that's been on with us quite a few times on some of the live episodes. She's definitely a big part of the team and uh, does the tours also, but we've uh, introduced her as our creative director. And now we've also got Madeline who's joined us and she went on a Scablands tour a year and a half ago and said, I got to be involved more in this. These are great people. This is like my family, my extended family. Yeah. So she is uh, helping out with social media. We're going to be making more video shorts that she'll be involved with. And she is kind of our wrangler. It's her, uh, <laughs> one of the nicknames on the tours. Cause, uh, when we need to get moving places, she's going to let you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Welcome. Happy to have both of you with us. Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. You. Love y'all. Now, what I find particularly valuable about going to the, to the scab lands is that you now get, you can now get a sense of what these floods, the landscapes, these floods have created on a spectacular scale. But the evidence for mega floods is everywhere. Virtually every river in North America has evidence of massive floods occurring around the same, in that same epoch, within that same window, which was the deglaciation. What this does is by seeing this kind of evidence displayed so spectacularly, you can go back to wherever you, wherever you live, uh, in the east, the west, doesn't matter. You can start seeing the world through new eyes. You can start looking at things that you just took for granted and didn't think about. And then, oh, wait a second. I've seen something like that. I did. Now, this may not be as spectacular, but my point is, is that all over like North America, South America, Europe, Asia, in fact, there's a place in Asia called the Altai Mountains, where is the only other place on earth where uh, mega floods with peak discharges of seven to 800 million cubic feet per second have been documented. But what I'm trying to get to is that once you begin to recognize this stuff, you can now see the landscapes around you with new eyes. And you'll realize that it may not be as spectacular or as extravagant as what we're going to see in Washington State, but it is undeniable once you begin to recognize these features. And so what the purpose of one of the, the, the objectives and goals of these tours that we're doing is to essentially teach people to read a new language, a language of the landscape, that there is a script engraved into the landscape of planet Earth that's been waiting 10, 12, 14, 15,000 years <clears throat> to be deciphered and read and understood. And we're now in a very privileged position because we have not only the ability to cover lots of ground, like when I go back to J. Harlan Bretts in the 1920s, there were very few roads. They were driving in old jalopies. They were having to go by mules uh, on foot. Now, of course, we can get access to all kinds of places that took him 10 years to get to. We'll be going to places in one week that took Brett's almost a decade to, to cover. And what he mapped over 25 years or so of, of traversing and becoming intimately familiar with this landscape, you know, we can see in an instant using satellite survey. So one of the things that we do, and Brad has done a, a, an amazing job of putting together these maps that we bring with so that we can show the aerial photography, we can show the, the digital elevation maps to help people get the big picture. distinct flood when you look at these cliffs I mean you can see very clearly it looks like they've been traumatized seriously traumatized huge volumes of muddy water pouring over that with icebergs and boulders tumbling down And then it would have washed down here, and we would have been obliterated. Yeah. 
So we've got another mega floods tour coming up. And we're all going to be there having a good time. That's seeing right. awesome landscapes. I, I think what we'll do, since we're looking up Grand Coulee here, and those cliffs are between eight and 900 feet high. And this feature was created in a short, powerful series of catastrophic flood episodes, meltwater coming from the north. And we can see this is all basalt bedrock here. This is We're going to be learning about all this. We're going to learn about the types of rock here. You'll notice that there's all of this, this gravel, which is actually, when you look at it close up, it's really more like boulders, but it's all stuff piled up against the cliffs. Now, normally you see a pile of, of gravel or boulders at the base of the cliff. You think of it as that it's, um, you know, fallen from the cliff itself. In this case, that's not what happened. This is sediment that was being washed along in these tremendous currents. Now, the, the current flow that created Grand Coulee that you see here was between three and 400 million cubic feet per second. And it was ripping, you know, it ripped out almost 900 feet of bedrock in generally about a mile up to five miles wide. And in that flow, you see all of this material that's, up against the, the the rock face here. And that was sediment that was being washed along within the flood. I'm going to do a quick share screen here. Yes, Brad. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Well, I'm just pointing out. I was, I was trying to put up a map myself, but I'm having uh share issues. So did you ever say what lake it is? Lake Lenore. Yeah. Lake Lenore. Yeah, that's it. All right. So here we got a, 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 a digital map of Grand Coulee. You can see there's upper Grand Coulee and lower Grand Coulee. We're going to actually be staying in a wonderful resort right here at the south end of, of the Coulee, right at the mouth of the Coulee. And we're going to be doing this travel up the Coulee. We're going to see this amazing Dry Falls Cataract Complex right here, uh, which is one of the things that's now become um, most familiar to people who are interested in these floods because what you have there is an abandoned cataract along the lines of um, – Niagara Falls, and I'm going to show you an image here in a minute that will give you a, a sense of scale between the two. Um, and then this is Upper Grand Coulee, and the water came from this direction, right up here, and it cut this notch right here in the bedrock, flowed down this way. And you can see there's a feature here. We'll be vis right where visiting Steamboat Rock, or we'll be going by it, Bradley. Yeah, that's part of the finale. We, part of the we finale. Love okay. Hiking up Steamboat Rock, uh, 18. 100 feet up and uh, checking out the sunset, uh, looking down the coulee there. It's a quite spectacular way to end the tour. It is a spectacular way to end the tour. So that's Steamboat Rock. This is Dry Falls Cataract. And interesting geology. We won't get into this. This is kind of stuff you'll be learning on the tour. This is what we're calling coulee monocline here. You can see this. This is an uplift. This is a fold, a compressional fold in the basalt bedrock. And you can see that the flow that created Grand Coulee came in at an angle. And when it hit the monocline, the upfolding caused a weakening and a fracturing of the rock. So what happened once this, this more confined flow hit the monocline, it spread out. And you can see all of this area down here is where this water spread out and, and carved this amazing plexus of, of, uh, of channels and buttes and mesas and things. And then you had a flow that followed the, the monocline here, which is natural because the monocline, again, because of the fact that it was this upfold that cracked and fractured the rock, which re weakened the rock and, the, and these tremendous flows that created Grand Coulee was able to exploit that weakness right here. So we're going to be traveling up Grand Coulee. Let's see if I've got, uh, let's that see. Was, what... Ends up, that was the exact uh, image I was going to show low angle uh from there but uh okay if you got your own thing yeah we'll just we'll catch up with mine later or i'll just insert them here okay afterward uh, let's get past it so here's the what's called the great notch so here's where the water breached the the wall of bedrock here and it cut this big notch this is grand coulee dam we will be visiting an overlook here where we can see the spectacular head of the coulee. We'll be able to see the dam itself, which is which is an amazing piece of engineering. And um, and then we'll be traveling up and down. We'll 
okay, here's one of the perspectives you see. Here's the head of the coulee. Now, prior to the floods that created the coulee, that notch, let me go back, this notch was not here. In fact, it's roughly 2,400 feet above sea level here and here, and this basalt would have been continuous across here until the water hit it and and carved this, this uh, saddle right here. Um, here's an aerial photograph of the same thing, and here's another, I'm sorry, this is a satellite photograph. This is an aerial photograph looking down the coulee, and here you see Steamboat Rock. Now, here's the thing that people need to be, uh, uh, understand is that before these floods, this bedrock was continuous right across here. The coulee didn't exist. Once the water started rushing across the bedrock, bedrock, it quickly ate its way down, cut away between eight and 900 feet of bedrock. Had the, the floods continued, say for another week or so, steamboat rock, which is a remnant of the previous landscape, it would have been completely washed away. But as it is now, it's roughly a mile long, about 800 feet high. So, um, and this is where it transitions from, uh, from basalt bedrock into granite, which is, you know, we're going to be learning all that on the tour. And here's another nice map where you can see Steamboat Rock in there. You can see the notch. You can see the flow of the water until it hit the monocline. By the way, this monocline, when that water poured over the monocline, it was an it was a waterfall that was uh, nine hundred feet high and more than a mile wide, probably one of the greatest waterfalls ever to have occurred in the history of the earth. That waterfall is not there anymore. It ate its way up, was it uh, creating a cataract that receded upstream until it breached up here. And when you get down into the floor of the coulee itself, you see these amazing deposits, which are essentially like a uh, uh, a freeze frame of these gig giant currents that are sweeping through the coulee, choked and laden with sediment. And within that sediment, there are these boulders. You'll see here like the, the black basalt down here. You'll see the, the white granite here. And you can actually see the, 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 the currents are in these gravel deposits. And we're going to be learning how to decipher and read all of this. Uh, it's quite, I mean, it's a, it's a new kind of a literacy being able to look at the earth around you and read the, the script of catastrophism in the landscapes. So that's a big part of one of the goals of these tours that we do is to teach people how to read this kind of, uh, uh, uh script right here. Here is a map of the magnificent dry falls cataract. The, the total distance across here is almost five miles. And you can see here that the water came from the north. Now there's a, there's a man-made dam right here to create the reservoir, which is now Banks Lake. But when that water came, you have what this is called a recessional cataract because the, the sheer power of this water pouring over these cliffs is causing the cliffs to erode upstream. So the cataract complex that you see here is a remnant uh, it is essentially a marker showing where the erosion was at at the time the floodwaters finally stopped. And we'll be coming, driving up the coulee here, and we make this round, and it, as we're climbing up the coulee walls, there's a, a magnificent overlook right here where we can see the lower, we look down south down the lower Grand Coulee um, before we get up to the visitor center at Dry Falls. Now, if you've ever been to Niagara Falls, you know it's quite an impressive feature, quite an impressive flow of water. But this is Niagara Falls horseshoe cataract to the same scale as Dry Falls. And we're only looking at one, one cataract here, and you can see that the whole complex utterly dwarfs Niagara. Uh, and this is something to see. This is something that will really open your eyes to the power of, of these floods. These cliffs here are about 400 feet high. The flow of water coming through here is about 400 feet. At the peak of the flood, it wasn't really even a waterfall like you see up here with, uh, with uh, Horseshoe Falls at Niagara. It was just a bump in this gigantic, uh, turbulent river, probably moving between 30 and 40 miles an hour at least. It would have been choked with thousands of icebergs within the flow of water itself was 
billions of tons of gravel and boulders and things being swept along. Because bear in mind, that water flowing over here, before the flood, this cataract wasn't here. All that, all that rock had to be ripped out, had to be quarried out from bedrock. And then, of course, it got washed downstream. And there's a, there's a, a massive boulder fan splayed out from the mouth at the southern end of Grand Coulee that covers hundreds of square miles. And it is the debris that was ripped out in the carving or creating of, uh, of Grand Coulee. And here you can see this overview of Niagara is interesting because you see the cataract shape here, just like we saw right here. And you have an island here. Now, if Niagara, American Falls, and Canadian Falls keep eroding backwards, and you will now have this isolated island, which is kind of a, an analog for Steamboat Rock. Um, and at one point, with Steamboat Rock, just like you see here with, with um, uh, Niagara, you would have had waterfalls, huge waterfalls on either side of Steamboat Rock. And they would have rapidly recessed upstream. Now, bear in mind, when you're, you're talking about um, highly erosive floods, 400 feet deep, moving at 40 miles an hour, they're going to be eroding and ripping this bedrock out many, many times quicker than the erosion that you see here. Um, and again, this gives you a sense of the scale. And if you go back, like you look at this, this amphitheater here, this, this cataract, you go back to two a couple of slides here, you can really begin to appreciate the magnificence of this feature. And uh, usually we try to take it in looking from the top and the bottom uh, so you can get the full perspective of it, showing here 800 feet across. And here's here's from the near the visitor center. We're looking out at the, the nearest cataract right here, and I'm going to drop in Niagara Falls Horseshoe Cataract for scale. So this is something, again, and, and this is only one feature out of dozens and dozens of these magnificent features, these these uh, that really uh, magnificently display the effects of these giant floods. And so imagine Randall gushing like this for five days out in the field on a tour, and you can be there with us. Dry Falls is one of the uh, maximum enjoyment places. Like he said, yeah. we get on top, we get down to the bottom, and that's part of the finale day. We go up Grand Coulee. That Wilbur Rock right there is is not going to be part of the tour. Yeah, we want to kind of have kept this brief. These are some of the things we're going to be doing, and we'd love for you to join us in mid-May. That's coming soon. RandallCarlson.com is where you're going to get all the information Randall Carlson related, tours, events, everything, monthly newsletter, RandallCarlson.com. But, yeah, can we – kind of get some closing comments and well yeah invite everybody we got yeah. we got we got a few seats left and we want to have a full tour yeah we want to have a full tour um the the tours we've had in the past have been just great fun and the other thing i'm going to mention is the the community that's forming around these ideas there's a whole network of of friends and 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 community that's forming who you know, this, these ideas that we're learning about here are so integral to the whole paradigm shift that we're in right now, realizing that our own history of the human species on planet Earth is far deeper and far more complex than we would even imagined a generation ago. And these great events in world history, like what we're going to be learning about here, are integral to understanding that what we might want to think of as the lost past of the human race on planet Earth. And when you begin to, to see these things and experience them firsthand, that's when you really begin to like look back at the stories, the myths that have come down to us from all around the world of these tremendous events, flood events and, and, and the deluge that that's not just you know, the, the Noah flood, but I mean, we can talk about Deucalion and Zisithrus and Utnapishtim. We can talk about the, in, and we will be talking about the, the legends of North American indigenous peoples that undoubtedly experienced some of these tremendous floods at the end of the last ice age.
And this tour that we're going to be doing is sort of an introductory tour for anyone who wants to really dive deep into understanding and deciphering this, this ancient script that's preserved for us in the landscapes. Because again, there is this, this kind of evidence is all over the place. And we've done many tours now, uh, you know, we've these Cumberland tours that we've been doing, we've we've seen exactly the same kinds of features. Not quite as spectacular, but still mind-blowing in their scale. And realizing that, yeah, everywhere about us, there's evidence for these outsized events is preserved. And we just have to cultivate the eyes to see. And then we can begin to really perceive the stories uh, that have so much to teach us about our own past. So I want to emphasize again, what comes out of this, one of the other, and, and we've gotten the feedback over and over again from people saying, yes, this trip was magnificent. The, mm -hmm. the, the things that we saw and learned, but you know what else was just as wonderful was the friendships and the community that's forming around this. Absolutely. So, Lifetime but, friends, you got yeah. instant connection with people, uh, no judgment zone. You can just walk up to anybody and have a bunch of things immediately in common. And uh, it's, it's yeah. just all kinds of fun. Uh, we stay up late. We get up early. We do ice baths if you're so inclined. Uh, it's, it's just endless fun. Here's a group. Yeah, just, I yeah. challenge you to go talk to, the, talk to somebody there about the craziest thing that you've ever wondered about in your life. And I bet you that they have opinions on it as well. Yeah. And they'll want to go back and forth on that too. Here's this group is we're down in the bottom of Grand Coulee behind us is Umatilla rock. You can't see over to the left, just to the North would be dry falls cataract. Um, I see a few, few familiar faces here. I see Laura and I see Brad in the hat and there's, there's yours truly standing here. And <laughs> you can tell these folks are not having a good time. No, we are having an awesome time. And, um, Will we be getting down there? Will we, will we be going down into Sun Lake Parks, right, Brad? Do we get? Well, not 100%. No. I'm working on a surprise. Okay. Um, so we may or may not do that. That's one of our lunch possibility spots and one of our cliff diving spots. Nah. But uh, I'm, I'm working on a, a new angle, perhaps. Okay. Uh, that would be special for this tour. See dry oh. falls that we haven't done before. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Hey. Always, so, yes. always something a little bit new and different. Yeah. Stepto Butte was going to be one of our first tours. Now, that is always one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Madeline, you've been to Stepto Butte. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah. There we get to see the, the incredible rolling Palouse. And I've got a picture I want to share here from taken from the top of Stepto Butte. And We've had some great sunsets. We try to time it so we're there a little before sunset and you get the shadows and uh, that's probably the photo he's going to show. But yeah, they really jump out at you. It's gorgeous. Now, when we're there, now th this is a picture taken in the fall. This is the rolling Palouse. Now, this was a, submerged under, and in this place, the water wasn't as deep. It wasn't moving as fast. That's why it didn't wash away the couple hundred feet of topsoil. But what it did do is it smoothed it into these undulating forms like this, which is called the rolling Palouse. Now this picture was taken in the fall. We're going to be there in May. And so this is going to be a livid green. It's, it's just amazing to see this in the spring when this whole landscape is just green. Absolutely yeah. vibrant. It's amazing. Absolutely vibrant. And one of the things also we will be having some um we'll be having some briefings so anybody who has signed up for the tour you can come on and what we're going to do is give you an introduction to some of the geology and the science and the terminology and the places we're going to be going so you can you go in there you're not going to be completely green you're going to be able to go in there and you're already going to have kind of a conceptual framework for understanding what you're going to be seeing a so, much longer version you, of what better... Randall's done today, and uh, we have we have previous classes like that available, and uh, a playlist of videos and podcasts that you could really bone up on your scablands and mega floods knowledge. Yeah, and you better study up 
because <laughs> there's a be quiz. quiz. There's a quiz. Yes. Well, Trivia this can be embarrassing. Get dished out. There's these, all kinds these of these tours yeah. that we do are very much about sightseeing and and taking in the magnificent landscapes, but it's also about learning. These are educational tours as much as anything else to try to teach people about this incredible phenomena that really has only just you know, has been there, but out pushed out to the fringes for, for too long. And now we're realizing that, hey, we're not going to understand our history on this planet if we don't take this kind of stuff into account. It might Resort, be the most fun gonna, learning you've ever done. Yeah. And it is. It should is. We mention yeah, it's addictive. The, it's going to be. Yeah. We'll start in Spokane and then head out to our resort there in Grand Coulee. Yeah. And it's, it's cabins. It's, um, a historic hotel. There's a sauna, a couple of saunas, maybe it's right it's on a lake, right on kayaking. a lake. It's swimming. Uh, yeah. And the mineral water is pumped into the rooms. So yeah. you can yes. take mineral baths in the hotel. Yeah. yeah. And to the native Americans, nice. this place was considered sacred and they came there when they had their aches and pain to soak in the mineral water. So we have access to all of that. That's a nice little bonus. Um, when we come back, we might be tired from a long day of exploring. We come back and um, we'll be doing, yeah, I mean, and, and the food is great. All the food is covered. We'll be having picnics. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And this is a contact at the cabin event. Darren Grimes and Graham, tell me. Darren. Darren Grimes Dunlop, and Graham me, I, I knew there was a tire involved. <laughs> yeah, they they do the, they do the Grime America podcast, and uh, they initiated these five years ago. We're almost right at five years. It's going to basically mm -hmm. be the anniversary when we go of our first mm -hmm. tour ah. with, with them. Yeah, right. That's when that's when we first met Laura. Our anniversary. And she joined in. Yep, that's right me. away. Knew it was uh, going to be worthy. So, yeah, contact at cabin dot com. We'll, we'll get you directly to the link to the Eventbrite site, but you can also route through randallcarlson.com. And uh, the other events, uh, we want to keep these semi-brief. So, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just make another recording and cover the other events you got coming up, uh, the speaking engagements, Randall. And then definitely uh, more involved on the Columbia Gorge because I've got some drone images and video that uh, I know you guys are going to love that you haven't seen and uh, I'm going to get more on the way to the Scablands so we'll do, we'll do a further treatment of Columbia Gorge and that again is coming up mid-September and that's also you can find that information contact at thecabin.com and randallcarlson.com excellent well Laura what Hi. is that interesting scene behind you there it looks familiar it does. Do you know what it's called, Randall? Do you remember? Let me see. That would be <laughs> Potholes Cataract. And that is the right. great rock blade that separates two ca two cataracts. You can't see. There's one to the right and one to the left. Yes. And uh, we're looking to the west there. So that would be a beautiful sunset. And this is the kind of things we see on these on these trips. We We take in some, just some of the sunsets we've seen, like particularly at Steamboat Rock. Now, it's a person there that. for scale. There is. Right? I was going to say, I think that might be lovely Laura there on the edge of that cliff. Is that I'm me? Sure. This might, I think it, this it is a Brad be. picture. I can't It is. It is one of my photos, so sure. and I'm thinking that's you. That so, yeah. Our very own Laura out there. We, we also and then always love having him. a person for scale. Yeah. Yeah. So, you this just is. You have to adjust it for, uh, for this size. This is another a cataract that is on the same scale of magnificence as dry falls uh, that we looked at. And will we be visiting? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, okay. So, so this yeah. is on the, this That's is on a the must. Itinerary. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, because people see it on Joe Rogan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. This is one of my favorite spots. I would I say agree. this step toe in Palouse falls. Mm -hmm. My favorites. Those are your favorites. Mm-hmm. It's tough to choose. It yeah, is tough the, to choose. Madeline, I like a good sunset. Out so anything twice? with a good sunset. I have Some been jump out as a favorite to you? Uh, definitely um, Stepto Butte. Stepto Butte is, is a really, really cool spot. 
And we're going to, yeah, because even just getting out night. to it first is night. otherworldly. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Get you wound oh. up. There you go. Literally. Now, what season of the year were you there, Madeline? I went in September of 2022, okay. and then I was there last year in May. Okay. Since you've been there in the spring. Yeah. 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 So there's an interesting story behind Stepto Butte, and we'll talk about that while we're there visiting it. But it's so, yeah, uh, there'll be several nights where Randall does uh, lecture time, like we mentioned, uh, trivia. Uh, could be for some fun and prizes uh, and embarrassment and laughs. And, uh, yeah, we may, may have some other entertainment slash speaking engagements going on there. So Randall is not on, on call, on show all the time. Laura has just uh, expressed some talent as a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, who knows what you get this round? Well, and, uh, yeah, we may have some parties, may have some jamming going on. I hope so. Yeah. Well, at the resort, bring a drum? At, they give Yeah, us... if you have any instruments, make sure to bring them. That's yeah, right. bring your instruments. instruments. There's time for that. We've had some really beach, talented people. Nighttime beach access. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a nice site there at the resort on Soap Lake. Yeah, and, and the resort gives us access to a whole space that we can use as much as we want, which mm -hmm. is nice for gathering and presentations and parties and music or whatever. I mean, just, yeah, you can even go boogie board on the lake there mm -hmm. if you get up early enough kind of a full <laughs> schedule but yeah. and and lots of people end up driving out there and meeting us uh want to get some touring in on their own on their way uh we've advised quite a few people on on many stops to hit that aren't part of the tour that they can take before or after so you got room in your car or your rv whatever yeah if you got space bring your bring your instruments and we've also had youngsters i don't know who's coming this time but We've had uh, a range, some, sometimes four or five, uh, nine to 14, I guess, with us. So it's uh, and, Younger and probably too, a, I mean, up yeah. to 88 or 90-year-old a couple of times. Had people from Australia, had from pe people from all over the world come out. So it's quite It quite can a, be physically demanding, so that's worth mentioning. But it's we'll worth it. It's optional. not just a, yeah, it's not just a walk in the park. It's uh, boots on the ground. We're looking at these sites in depth. Some of them, so. yeah, but there there are plenty of options though. So you know, some yes. of the things will, yeah, you know, like when we go to Stepto Butte, you know, we we don't hike up that eighteen hundred feet. We <laughs> we drive up to the top. I thought that was just for time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we had three weeks, we, we can drop you off, Lauren. <laughs> and you can you can hike to the top. <laughs> <laughs> there we'll, are apple trees we'll wave at the, bottom at you on the way out. back down we'll wave as we pass you <laughs> we had one guy that was kind of scared of the road or being in the van on the road and he he started hiking down oh yeah i wasn't going to mention that but <laughs> well again oh, yeah. there's yeah. options we don't have to point that yeah, there are options. Options. So my, my outside lighting is messing with me it's getting darker Something's so I'm, going on. I'm, I'm getting like an instant sun tan it's here. Amazing. okay all right. Well, well it's been it's fun. Really it's been fun. It'll be even more fun in person. It will continue to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scavlands is like our home away from home as a team. So that's like our, uh, it is. our comfort zone mm -hmm. over there. We know what we're doing we know where we are. Mm -hmm. It's, it's annual. We hope that continues. Easy to get and, uh, Randall talking about stuff there for sure. So lots of one-on-one -on -one with Randall. Bring your well. burning questions. Yeah. This is your moment. <laughs> Time for all of it. All right. It's all right. Be fun. Well, thanks for joining us. See y'all there. Yeah. Hope so. Yeah, I mean this can be here so that people know that who's in charge around here.
now, tell me about the moon. <laughs> it's over there, moon. All right. Well, we'd like to. Right. We'd well, like let's to wrap it up there then. And, and thanks for being new subscribers and the people that have been with Randall all along. There's more coming. He's got a new podcast. We're talking about more cosmographias and that knowledge is going to keep coming uh, at higher speed. Can you take it more <laughs> Randall than you can handle? <laughs> See y'all. See you in the scab lands. <laughs>